Welcome guys, welcome back to another episode of Millennium Motives. Uh, today we have a really, really special guest. Uh, but first, before we get into that, I want to first introduce myself. My name is Orlando Ben. So right in front of me, I have my, my best friend, my boy Kyle Jones. We so in right, here. We I back. have the production here. Hello, you know, the hello. mastermind, George. <laughs> he's here with us as well. And then I have my guest to my left, Dalton Knight. The Dalton Knight. You know, the thing about Dalton is he has a lot of uh, establishments in his life that he has, you know, brought together for himself. He's a major shareholder in six companies. He's a self-proclaimed entrepreneur and inventor. He has a lot of things going on right now. So I want to first, you know, welcome you to the show, Dalton. And again, thank you, you know, for coming. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. No, yeah. thank My you for boys. scheduling us in. Yeah, yeah. no, we all yeah. play football together. Well, yeah. We all play football together too back in high school. So we're all pretty darn close, but you know, I'm glad to have you, man. You know, so, so that being said, Dalton, how Millennium Motive works this is a place where people in our age group can come together, motivate each other, uplift each other, talk about our accomplishments. And like I was speaking to you um, a few days ago, it's about us putting our heads together so that we can all get to the top, mm -hmm. right? So one of the questions I wanted to ask you, man, just to kind of get everything started, what motivates you to do what you do? Uh, I'm just afraid of the alternative. Uh, I watch like Gary Vee and... Uh, just the alternative, being being a slave, so to speak. Waking up when someone wants me to wake up, going to bed when someone wants me to go to bed, eating when they when they allow it, then dictating how much I'm worth. I mean, that yeah. sucks. Mm. Yeah. To, to just have someone that says, you're only worth 12 bucks an hour or whatever, that's, that's so demeaning. Mm -hmm. And then especially, you're never building your own dream. You're building someone else's dream is a big big thing on that too and then i just i just want to do my own thing when i wanted to be uh, i want to be the one of the freest men alive so i don't i know i can't accomplish that nor can i accomplish anything that my goal so to speak my bucket list has mm -hmm. if if i'm working for someone else i don't yeah, want to have yeah. to go into work and then tell someone i need x amount of days off i, I mm -hmm. the last trip i went on i went to italy i didn't even plan i think i planned like a month or two ahead mm -hmm. it wasn't like a, a lot of people that you'll see they'll plan like a year in advance mm -hmm. and i just mm -hmm. two i mean even two months that was just big just because it was a big ticket trip but uh i i like to stay at anywhere from a month ahead and i know i can't get that with the job yeah. i know i can't get the life that i want with the job yeah you don't want to conform to the system then. yeah and then yeah. you want to be spontaneous you want to be able exactly. to be like you know what New Zealand. I've been hearing good things. Yeah, exactly. Let's try it out. That's science, no joke. Literally, how I want to live my life. I, I want to. I want to one day have like a, a my own personal jet too, and then just be like, you know, what? I want some pizza, but I want some good ass. I'm tired of this Papa John's. Yeah, I want some yes. New York pizza or something <laughs> yeah. like that. You know, yeah. out or Italian or yeah, something like that. And you want to be able to go and actually visit New York and and, and, and experience that. And yeah. So, in other words, what motivates you to do what you do? you would say is just having that ability to do what you want, win what you want. Yeah, and it just, uh, I, I would actually say the biggest thing is just the alternative. I know the yeah. alternative. I know the alternative is just being being someone else's, you know, like. Yeah, so, yeah so, so so not just simply said is not being an employee. Yeah. You know, just not being an employee, just make, making it to where you have your own time. Mm -hmm. You're clocking your own time versus clocking time yeah. for someone else and like yeah. what and i've told you this before Linda. why do i not want to get a gray car just why <laughs> why don't i yeah, want to get a gray car? because you fall into that system right. of a guy that is waking up expressionless getting into his gray commuter car going to work so expressionless at his yeah, cubicle i, I have a great <laughs> car I have a great <laughs> as i was saying it as i was saying it i was just like i'm really putting him on the spot <laughs> i have a mazda too i see it all the time <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> no that but so it's funny. i think that's a lot of people's mindsets we don't want to fall in line we don't want to conform we don't yeah. want to be slaves to the system, just, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and in order to do that, you have to create something for yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't want to answer to anybody else, so you're going to have to create something for yourself and have something that other people want. Exactly. And like mm -hmm. you've done that, you've created some niche markets, and I wanted to get a little bit into it. Like yeah. Orlando has his one, <clears throat> what motivates you? Mm -hmm. I wanted to get a little bit, a little bit deeper into what you do. Obviously, you have six companies. How do you dictate? 
Yeah, shareholders. Where your time. Six, yeah, yeah. You're shareholders in six companies. Six all, companies. All six currently. of those companies, you know, you help to establish, and which is a big part of the reasons why you have shares in those companies, right? You know, my mindset on having shares in a company, you don't have a sh you don't have shares in the company that you don't care for and things mm -hmm. of that nature. So yeah, you know, just to feed off of what Kyle is saying, man, like what? Go ahead, Kyle. Go yeah, ahead. like how do you dictate where your time goes? Because time is money. Yeah, yeah. And then all of those companies have potential, but what takes priority or is there is it equal amongst all um, six right now that's, i mean that's a kind of tough one in the sense of like they all should get the same amount but in reality uh i would say my one company that's just pretty much almost solely mine i give that 90 percent of my time and i would even say that i'd say like 70 75 percent of my time which one is that uh the custom gains one the supplement yeah. and then the other one uh protein bun is the one i give the rest of my time to just because protein bun company i'm not the ceo of it so to speak i'm not the actual owner mm -hmm. like the legit owner of it yeah. uh but no I, but you're a partner in it and you have I, majority I, shares yeah mm -hmm. I, i'm more like his um uh his right hand and everything like uh because me and him together have the other like four or five other companies mm -hmm. that we do and we have a lot more other inventions and stuff that we want to pursue but uh, the reason why these two are getting the most attention one is just because it's one is just mine right now the supplement company is just mine so that's why i give that the most attention and then uh the protein bun company for right now is just also the supplement company i know i can get a bigger not necessarily a bigger payout but i know i can get a payout quicker than the other ideas that i have the other ideas like i have an idea for like a cleaning system a road system um a tool another like tool for uh, like a person that works in the garage so to speak i know those are going to take a lot more time to get off the ground mm -hmm. and a lot more capital uh, to, yeah, yeah exactly so yeah, i need yeah, to find out time. yeah i need to find a company um or so to speak, a system that gives me the money quicker so I could, I need seed money is what I need mm -hmm. basically. And so mm -hmm. the supplement company, I know that could do it just for me alone. And then the protein bun company, I know it could do it on a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. Like the supplement company, I would say is a, uh, I would say it gives me a couple hundred grand and then the protein bun company that makes I don't have to worry about money ever again. Mm -hmm. And then I know the protein bun company were roughly two years in, I want to say. Um, but I still know we're probably another year before I start getting real payout. Mm -hmm. Although at, tomorrow we're meeting with a, a church brothers, or no, I think it's Tuesday, which is like one of the biggest farm companies in the world. That's fantastic. Um, but uh, it could end all so to speak then but still that's i'm that's a more long-term thing mm -hmm. yeah and that's and i only know i'm only doing two just because i know i can only in my so to speak heart can only handle two yeah so, so you understand that you can't spread yourself out too thin yeah when it comes to that too so you two of them you're focusing on for yourself the other uh ones that are there you're just letting them pretty much have their own self-proclaim so you're saying hey I'm gonna start with these two, and those two are gonna help fund and continue to, exactly, to grow yeah. the other ones that are out there. Yeah. Um, you were mentioning, you know, you were in the uh, the nutrition industry when we talked before. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about those two, man. So let's kind of breathe life for you when it comes to those two companies. You know. Yeah. You you were mentioning, um, you know, uh, supplement company and protein company, and then you you were mentioning this bun company. So let's go ahead and start with the, the protein bun. Custom gains. Yeah, custom gains. No, no, the protein bun company is called protein. The yeah, protein it's called bun. protein buns. Mm -hmm. LLC, protein bun LLC. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a it's a a lettuce bun. We invented the first lettuce bun company or lettuce bun product because right now when you go to like say in and out in and out is probably the biggest name of it on on our side of the world, mm -hmm. um, but and like meaning California. Best one too. <laughs> Um, I mean, I haven't tried any other ones. No, no, right, I, hear but... <laughs> no I hear what you're talking about because we, we go to a food cart right outside of a brewery yeah. and they do like bratwurst and different kind of hot dogs mm. and stuff like that and they have a lettuce roll mm. and people walk like, they're like, oh, it's a roll made out of lettuce. No, yeah. literally they just roll the hot dogs, the bratwurst and a piece <laughs> yeah, of lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you yeah. are coming in with that solution yeah. you're coming in with a lettuce bun exactly and so natural lettuce bun right yeah. yeah so there's no um there's no glue there's no additives no nothing uh we just have a we have a patent on it um and uh, good luck's trying to steal it uh <laughs> we have uh in every single country we have a patent on it too so yeah. if you go to china still there we have a trademark on the name as well in every single country um so our patent thing covers 38 different variations so we have a uh, regular hamburger bun so it's a lettuce bun looks just like it you can go to proteinbun.com 
or mm-hmm. proteinbuns.com. And then the pro team is spelled P R O and then as in team, T E A M. And then buns. Protein. Protein. Yeah. Protein. yeah. Okay. Because we want to play on the play of words that you, and you yeah. can't you can't patent the word protein. protein. Right. Um, protein buns. So it's not, it's not a green, these are not green buns. You're not going to be eating a hot dog with some like a green lettuce. No, no, color. it is. Oh, is it? it? Yeah, it's that's legitimate. A, a, yeah, it we take like lettuce bun. and we have a patent process on forming it okay. uh, to an actual bun. You could literally cut it in fours. It stays its shape. You could roll it. It would roll like a regular hamburger uh, bun does. And we also have the form on uh, um, a hot dog bun too. Which weirdly tastes good, uh, and then we have one for pizza. Again, weirdly, weirdly tastes good. You don't realize how much bread takes away from the flavor, yeah. which is wild. Yeah. Uh, even the gluten-free buns, how much they take away from the flavor. It's so this, similar to like a cauliflower. Yeah, it's but just I, it's, but it's not the same. Uh, yeah. oh, cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're talking lettuce here. Like talking lettuce here man. Yeah, but like so we have we have the hamburger, we have the hot dog, we uh, the pizza was uh, sopa, which is a, a Mexican cuisine, um, and also we have the six inch sub, which makes a sandwich a thousand times better. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then also our uh, other parts of the patent covers the different variations in the sense of like it being made out of seaweed, kale, spinach. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. Chard, um, iceberg. Well, iceberg is the number one thing that we're using right, right now. Right, that's what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. I mean, iceberg, I mean, when everyone thinks lettuce, that's like the first thing that comes to their yeah. mind is yeah. iceberg lettuce. You know, yeah. when they see, when they hear lettuce wrap, they see iceberg lettuce wrapped. That, you know, that, but, that but what you're saying is you, you, you're yeah. taking that concept and saying, well, when people say, you know, lettuce bun or whatever, why not make it into an actual bun? And yeah, that's what, exactly. That's what protein has done. Yeah. You know, you guys have said, okay, let me, how can we form it to where it actually looks like a bun? Whether mm-hmm. it's a hot dog bun, whether it's, you know, a hamburger bun or, you know, like how you're saying, you know, with pizza and, and things of that nature. Yeah. You know, that's amazing, dude. That's, yeah, it's, that's, it's, that's a whole, it's that's on cool. a whole different level, you know. And the thing, the fact that we're getting into, you know, the futuristic realm of things, like you're right on track. I mean, there's other things out there in this world, you know, with VR and all that stuff. You know, with the phones and, you know, the different things that we can do now with that, with technology, you're riding the wave of technology, but when it comes to nutrition and health. I mean, in, in a sense, that. I would say more we're riding the, the nutrition, nutrition fad. Like, yeah. uh, because everyone's trying to do keto, uh, vegans, more uh, mm-hmm. abundant. Um, uh, there's like paleo. I think there's a meat, a carnivore. Um, but everyone's trying to be healthier. Right. But and, but you're doing it. The, where I'm coming from, though, is you're doing it in a, um, my mindset is you're doing it in a very futuristic way, too. Innovative. Innovative way. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I can see that then. I can see where you're coming from. Then. Yeah. Change the way, basically. We, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Like, obviously, you're... you're, you're you're looking into the nutrition world, you're riding that yeah. fad, you know, and it's not necessarily fad, you know, it's always been around there. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. always people that want to be healthy and stuff like that. You're just getting into it. Mm-hmm. You're getting into the health industry in a big way. Yeah. But you're changing, you're, you're He's changing, changing the it game. Up. Changing He's the changing game. You're SpongeBob. Yeah. Making the different colored crap. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what's happening. I'm ready. So. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. That's a good analogy, no, bro. That's kind of how I look at it, man. So you know, and there's obviously a reason why you decided to get into the, you know, into the, the nutrition yeah. industry too, right? So my second question to you is like, what made you want to get into this industry in general, like as far as nutrition and. Uh, are you talking about for the protein bun aspect or um, just in general the protein bun you know the well I honestly I don't really care what it is that I get involved in I mm-hmm. uh, my because my so to speak inventor slash mindset comes through is how can I solve a problem like mm-hmm. with the whole protein bun company um, the CEO of it was actually in in and out one day and um, uh, an older lady was saying that man I wish that these lettuce but I mean these lettuce wraps they fall apart you end up eating mm-hmm. it with the fork I wish there was something like an actual bun that they made and it was just kind of the the light bulb moment so to speak went home fiddled with it and then here we are so to speak today nice. um, it's just my whole thing is just finding a problem listening to a problem and solving finding a way it. to solve it yeah which well, is that's smart man every that's, business. that's yeah. every business you know when you're, every forming, business yeah, when you're forming a business plan they literally ask you what problem yeah. are you solving mm-hmm. and like if, if you have that mindset going into every single thing yeah. that you invent you're going to be able to have something that's going to pop off and then yeah. you'll be able to ride the coattails and have other things pop off alongside so exactly that's yeah because right. yeah. i mean i've done excuse me 
I've done a lot of things. Like uh, I've done my own car detailing because the problem is people don't want to detail their own cars. And then mm -hmm. car wash places are terrible for the car paint. Mm -hmm. If you didn't know that, now you do. Mm -hmm. um, it scratches it. Uh, it's also, just convenience, man. Yeah, I know. No, that's why, why it's such a big through, thing. Yeah, going I mean, drive throughs and stuff. Yeah, I mean, fast food is a good, but it's a big thing because it's convenience. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so I also did like a. Uh, a poop business. Uh, I, it was called the Protecting Night because my last name's Knight. Uh, <laughs> but I would go to people's house, pick up the poop. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I don't care what industry I got in. As long as I was solving a problem, I can make money out of it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the mindset. And, and like what Kyle was saying, though, man, that's the mindset of an entrepreneur. Whenever an entrepreneur sits, whenever somebody sits down and says, like how you were saying earlier, I'm done doing the nine to five. Mm -hmm. I'm done working with someone else. They have that moment in their life where they sit down and say. What I want, what do I want to be? You know, who am I, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the mindset that an entrepreneur has at one point in their life. They sit down and they say, what can I create to solve people's problems? Mm -hmm. Because if you can solve people's problems, then you can create a business based off of that equation, right? And, and from there, you can be successful with it. Because people only buy things when it serves them a purpose, Yeah. right? And the only thing, the only way that, it can serve someone's purpose is if that person has a certain problem that can be solved. Yeah. So, 100%. so in all the businesses that you've been in, you know, that's why, you know, what you're saying, that's why you're an entrepreneur. You know, you understand the, the cold hard facts of like, if I want to grow something, whatever I'm growing has to solve someone's problem at the end of the day. Yeah. And it's just, in my opinion, it's a lot more fun too. Yeah. Cause I mean, you, I could do something, I don't know, like, run another or franchise of GNC. I just, mm -hmm. for me, it's just, I, I, I really love working with my hands. That's, that's yeah. the biggest thing. Like work, being in the, in my garage, so to speak, working on something, building something. I mean, mm -hmm. time, I get, I say, I get in a time warp in the sense of like, I'll just, I'll get in there. I say 11 o'clock in the day, in the morning. And then I won't get out till like two, two in the morning. And it was just like, I didn't even eat. I didn't do anything. I didn't go to the bathroom weirdly, maybe because I'm on the, like eat once a day or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, uh, it's just like, I'm gone. Time's yeah. gone. I'm just in the there. Grind, man. Yeah. I, I say, yeah, I, yeah, I would say, yeah, it's just, it's just so much, it's so much fun. It's so much fun building. Mm -hmm. And especially cause I have like a 3d printer and like when you design something and then 3d print something that's like never been out in the world at all, mm -hmm. things mind boggle. It still mind boggles me yeah. when I print something. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's a, a level of respect that comes with the title of entrepreneur. Like when you tell somebody that you're an entrepreneur, it would be like, okay, He's either either trying to grow something or he has something and he's grinding. Yeah, or he's like, a watch or he's, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to say it because that thing is a, the most annoying thing in the world. Because like I've been to a, uh, now because my one of my biggest hurdles I have to get over is because I've been such in the so to speak grind, such in the hole of not talking to anyone. Like I haven't talked to you guys. I haven't talked to you since mm -hmm. high school, and I haven't talked mm -hmm. to you in a long time. Yeah. Um, and it's just because I've just been literally keeping my head down, waking up, doing the same exact pretty much routine. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things that you need is contacts, networking. And I was trying to join a bunch of these groups on stuff like that. Like on there's an app called Meetup that connects you to a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. But uh, like you get a bunch of entrepreneurs, man, they're just in a multi-level or something like that. I'm just like, oh, I don't. Mm -hmm. I see it as, well, I mean, I see it as this. You know, when it comes to people, let's kind of go off on a tangent here. When it comes to people with MLMs, right? Um, that's just the entrepreneur path that they've decided to take for oh, yeah. themselves, you know? Oh, yeah. There's different ways of growing your own business. There's different ways of becoming your own entrepreneur. You know, you can be a part of a business that's, you know, already established and sell their products for them and, you know, be a part of it in that way, or you can create your own substance. You know? Well, you know, I have a question of, for you guys then. What do you guys think an entrepreneur is? Like, what's your definition of entrepreneurship? I mean, George, you, I, I'm, I'm going to let you take this one, but I'll go ahead and just quickly say it's it's starting something and having control of it, having having control of something and uh, from start to finish and having to say so. So, like as an entrepreneur, you should have the ability to dictate what something sells for, have employees under you, and be able to make those decisions. Like, hey, you're either good or you're not, and I can let you go. When it comes to an MLM not really afforded that. You don't make the products. You don't make, so you don't make right. the products. You don't set the, the margins. And there is there isn't a level of control that I think an, an entrepreneur or a business owner. And you, you have to decide whether an entrepreneur is a business owner 
and or an entrepreneur is someone that is self-made and controls their own destiny somewhat. Mm -hmm. See, you mentioned, is, so, so to, to, to answer that question for me, for you, Dalton, um, the name entrepreneur and the definition of entrepreneur is, for me, something that you have up here in your mind that you've made for yourself that you know that you want the world to see. It's a mindset. Right? It's a mindset. You know, it's a different, it's a different mindset from the traditional individual that goes to work every single day. Um, like how you're, it's really going based off of what you were saying earlier. You have all these ideas, you have this way of life that you want to live for yourself, whether that's making millions and billions of dollars or whether that's just simply making enough to, you know, you know, pay your mortgage and just be chilling, you know? Knowing that you have a certain mindset and certain standards and a certain goal that you want to achieve in your life, right? That's the definition of an entrepreneur for me because you are self-made at that point. At that point, you know for yourself what you want and you make the decision whether I'm going to work for someone else or am I going to create something of substance and out of that creation reap the benefits. Can you be an entrepreneur and work nine to five under someone? You can. Yeah. You absolutely yeah, can. Absolutely but can. the but the definition of entrepreneur, if you were to go to it, is someone who incurs the risk and who is taking some who's taking the risk themselves in mm -hmm. or in a pro in a project. Mm -hmm. um, when people were investing in Apple or Microsoft uh, back in the early days, Microsoft was the entrepreneur, but also the investors because they were taking a risk with their money. Yeah. Um, when you have something like an MLM, you're taking a risk in the sense that can you make this product sell? When you are in real estate, you're mm -hmm. saying, will people trust me enough to represent their house? Right. Me as a filmmaker, will people trust me enough to film their wedding? Will people trust me enough to buy a uh, to buy food from me? Will people trust me enough to buy these protein buns and the the supplements? Mm -hmm. That's all it is, is you are taking the risk yourself that is potentially going to either pay off or you're going to have to like cut your losses. So that to me is if you're taking a risk, that's entrepreneurship. Right. Right. Mm. And uh, yeah, couldn't have said any better, George. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, no, George is 100% absolutely right. right. Absolutely right. You know, that's, that's why right. I wanted him to take it. No, Well, my take is, it, is it, it's, it's everyone has their own. The reason why Dalton, I feel you asked that question which was great, man, was because everyone has their own mindset of what that statement means. You know, what that means to be an entrepreneur, be your own business owner, whatever. Everyone has their own reason for it. Mm -hmm. Just because it's a name doesn't mean that everyone, like, the, the true definition, everybody stands by the true definition. Everybody has their own definition of what that means for themselves. Yeah, 100%. Right? And that goes based off of, you know, for me with this show, Millennium Motive, you know, what is it that motivates you to be your version of what an entrepreneur is. And see? that's why in episode zero, I was mentioning that I, I personally do believe that everybody, especially in our generation, has somewhat of a mindset of an entrepreneur because mm -hmm. especially in the social media, mm -hmm. like universe, I know George, we, we, we can debate about this, but <laughs> especially, especially in the social media realm of things, we are all promoting ourselves. We're trying to get as many followers and sell ourselves as the product mm -hmm and get as much following for that product as possible. And people don't, like, I don't put as much weight into that as others, but I, everybody sees the likes and does somewhat give it validity, right? Like, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, this post got 74, this only got 15. We're gonna archive yeah. this thing. Yeah. Makes the 15 posts just <laughs> going in the archive. We've, we, we, we've completely, like, tangent off, like, completely opposite of what we were talking about with the meetups and stuff, because you mentioned entrepreneurs. So let's, let's tie it back a little bit back to that subject. I have a question for all three of you, and then you can continue your story a little bit more. But um, what do you guys think is the definition, if we, are, if we already defined an entrepreneur, what's a entrepreneur? Entrepreneur. I'll take it. Yeah, There's a person that works nine to five and wants to have the life that you have, but is not going to willing to take the risk. Exactly. Is not willing to do world. anything. But yeah. also, I think that I, it's a big thing. But I think entrepreneurs are basically born. Like if you working at a nine to five, the only reason why you're working there is because you're starting up your other company on the side and you need cash flow and you don't want to bring anyone or sell any other investment or piece of the company, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But you just can't. You just can't work in a nine to five. You, if you're working in a nine to five and you can actually breathe in it, uh, you're a entrepreneur, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. 
my opinion, what an entrepreneur is, is somebody that has or says to everybody, you know, I have this going on, things of that nature, I have these ideas, but they're not taking any action. Yeah. I'm an action taker type yeah. of guy. So if you're telling me, you know, you have this product and, and it's going to serve this purpose, I'm the type of person that's going to then ask you, what steps are you taking to yeah. make that a reality, yeah. right? And if you're somebody that says, oh, uh, well, I haven't really taken any steps towards that, then in my mind, that's what a entrepreneur is. Yeah. You know, then you just wasted my, my time, time <laughs> talking yeah. about this great idea yeah. that I can do two things. I can either take that idea and run with it myself, or are you asking me, that's, is that what you want? Are you trying to, what, you, are, what steps are you taking? What are you trying to do? And if you can't answer that question, then you're a entrepreneur. That means that you see people taking steps in their life towards what they want to accomplish, and you're living life carelessly through them instead of living life on your own and mm -hmm. making those decisions for yourself. You know what I mean? And, and making something of it. Yeah. So, yeah. entrepreneurs my thing is, my, yeah, my thing, yeah, because they never took they a never chance. They never took a chance. You know, my thing leap. is, is it, it doesn't matter, you know, how little those leaps are, you know, how little, uh, you know, those certain aspects are, whether that's just simply, you know, creating a logo. Well, you just ventured off from being an entrepreneur because creating a logo is a part of yeah, creating a company. It's a step. Right? It's a step. It's as a step. long as you're taking those steps, you're an entrepreneur. You have that mindset. But if it's all in your mind and you haven't put anything down on paper, you haven't made anything come out into the world when it comes to it, and you're just talking about it, you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. It's so. about wanting to do something or doing something. It's, yep. Again, it's all just yep. action-based. Action taking. You got to yeah. just gotta baby action. step it. People want to make giant leaps, leaps. and yeah. then your legs are not strong enough. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> especially at the age you skip leg day a few times. <laughs> yeah, and unless you are like a trust fund baby and you have the resources in order to get that stuff done and have other people take care of it for you, you're not as an individual strong enough to make those giant leaps. You can mm -hmm. definitely try, and it's and I commend you for trying mm -hmm. because you have mm -hmm. to. You have to. You have to. But baby, step it. Baby, step it, baby, and you're gonna get to where <laughs> you're gonna get to where you need to get to. But it's it's not gonna happen as quickly as you might as want, you it want it to. to. That's the biggest and, and, thing. And having that real, yeah, that. having that realization too is very key uh, when it comes to growing your own businesses, being a part of businesses and things of that nature. Being an entrepreneur per se is if you can put to rest in your mind that hey, look, this isn't gonna happen overnight. And if you can understand that I'm going to have failures, then you won't be afraid to take those baby steps. Mm -hmm. You won't be afraid to take those large leaps. You yeah. know, if something comes up where you can make a huge decision, you're going to make the decision instead of just sitting there questioning the decision. You know, you can you can just off the whim just I'm going to do it or mm -hmm. I'm not because you are OK with accepting it not working. Yeah. Right. If you can be OK with accepting something not working then you have enough faith, you have enough hope to get to the goals and the confidence that you want to get to. No, but that, that comes know? with having a plan yeah, B, C, plan B, C, D, D, D. 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 Like, you got to have those other yeah. plans because trust me when I say I've <laughs> ran through the first five <laughs> letters <laughs> of my plan already in life. Mm -hmm. And I understood that I needed to exp at least explore those things in order to find what I truly wanted to do. Because mm -hmm. I... I absolutely thought plan A was going to work. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's what I wanted to do until it was not. <laughs> and then I got to plan B and I'm like, okay, we're good. We're going to go. Plan B, fall yeah. on my face. You, gotta, you, you gotta have to explore to those failure, things yeah. and you have, to, yeah, you have to be able to accept, accept failure, failure and understand that everything does happen for a reason. I, I believe in chaos, but I also don't believe in coincidences. Mm -hmm. So you got to take things as they come and understand that you might think that you have the skill set that you do but it, it's it might not be registered or like received the way that you thought it would mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's something that's very difficult to accept at the end of the day but if you can get and bring yourself to accept those things yeah you're, you're going to be able to get through and be a tougher person because right. of that right but yeah and you'll be able to, be able to uh, expand your brain as far as your knowledge base, as far as yeah. what you know, yeah. because you've dabbled in certain things, you know. Yeah. So, but on a on a different I, on a different tangent. Want, yeah, I think I think this is a good this is a good transition. <laughs> a good time. transition. Georgia to, did want to like. Did you want to ask 
adults or anything? Like, did you have any questions that we haven't like already covered? Um, I'm fascinated in the R and D process for a lot of things, but I don't want to get too into it because it is a patented process. I don't want to get into like, you know, some schmuck out there is going to be able to take this idea and run with it or <laughs> let them try. But I'm just I have a certain set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> it's called, I'll just start up another company. Yeah. So so I almost I almost want to ask like. How many iterations of a uh, of the uh, the protein buns did you go through before you found oh, the shit. right process? I know oh that's God. a that that's a um, crazy question, but I love I'm I'm a tinkerer myself. I love making crazy stuff, ma crazy contraptions. Well, I, I I mean, I definitely think about that question. Me and my uh, business partner, his name is uh, the the one that runs uh, protein bun is called his name's Art Roll Dan. But uh, it's funny that you say it because we talk about that all the time. Um, I don't know the exact number for him. I don't know even a close number. I know it's more than 10. Mm -hmm. But I know for my supplement company that um, I roughly have like four four pieces to it, four pieces to my machine. And I'm not kidding you. I, I literally counted because I can on my uh, my CAD or my uh, 3D design thing or software. It tells me how many time, versions or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I've done over... I think it was 120 Ooh. versions per piece wow. that I've just, cause like I'll print something or I'll make it and I'm like, mm, no, that needs to be changed. Oh no, this doesn't work that well. This needs to be a little bit more. This needs to be moved. I'd say easily over 400 for the whole thing. Easily. Wow. That's wow. not, I, I would say, and then there's still so, so much more to go to. I would say mm -hmm. probably another like four, 400 more, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. It takes just, a lot of patience, man. Yeah, that's. I'd say the biggest overlooked thing it, having being an entrepreneur or trying to just do your own thing is patience. Patience, patience kills me sometimes. Yeah, I hear you. Mm -hmm. um, I remember first when I even was discovered the word entrepreneurship uh, from Art Roldan uh, or Mr. Roldan, as I as like I say. Um, he was just telling me that the biggest thing that you're going to have to learn is patience. And I'm not kidding you, every single day I wake up, it's something I still and will forever have to continue to learn. Because having all those iterations, it's not a big deal to me, but at the same time, it's just time. It's time, time, time. Mm -hmm. I think it took, it's taken me over like a year and a half, maybe two years to build my machine. Just because so many things happen, so many iterations, so many life unexpected yeah, things happen. You know? yeah successes and failures yeah but yeah a lot though a lot yeah. i know with the protein bun company i know we've done at least uh over 10 um just with the molding and stuff like that i know i've built for him over 10 stuff just for one iteration of his whole uh process because mind you there's not a machine out there that makes a bun we patent the process stuff so making the whole thing it's taking a long time mm -hmm. uh i think we're we just got over two years of the protein bun company um so yeah, it's taking a long time. Wow. Now speaking, uh, okay, so you were mentioning, you know, obviously you have this protein bun uh, company. I want to now set that aside, mm -hmm. and I want to talk about um, the second company that um, you're involved in, which is the Custom Games. Custom Games. Yeah, yeah. You know, vitamin. It was. It's a. It's a protein supplement, vitamin supplement company. I wouldn't say uh, vitamin. It's okay. just because I'm not. I don't. I don't. There's some. No, not, not vitamin. What you were. My, my apologies. What you were telling me um, is that this is a way for individuals to create their own. Um, well, I'll just I'll just do know. my spiel. Yeah, so, Custom Gains is the first of its kind. Um, there's nothing like it in the every any single market. China, uh, Germany. I've even had to invent this machine for it. What it does is it makes it so the customer can actually, for the first time in the life, being able to customize their own supplement. Hmm. Uh, meaning, say if for a pre-workout you take. Um, you want to have 300 milligrams of caffeine or you want to have 100 milligrams of caffeine, mm -hmm. you can have it. If you also want to have uh, glutamine in it, you can have it. Whatever you want in it, we can give you in it. And especially my biggest thing of it too, or one of the biggest things of it too, is we go all the way to the sweetener aspect too. Because there's a lot of people with celiac disease, like my business partner has celiac disease or a certain other disease or allergic reaction to something that you can't take a certain sweetener. Mm -hmm. And sucralose is in everything. Some people can't take sucralose. Like for instance, keto is a big thing right now. And keto, I want to say they're into erythritol and uh, monk fruit, I believe. It. Yeah, monk fruit. And I think there's like one other one. Uh, I think it's like exam. No, no, it's just those two, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyways, there's if you look in the pre-workout or protein, there's that thing is to find monk fruit or erythritol in it is so rare and it's pretty much not there. Mm -hmm. If it is, it's very, very small 
very small company that's doing it. Really? But um, another big thing is too is I wanted, I hated the big jug aspect. Um, that's one of the biggest things I want to get rid of because also, I don't know, I don't know if it's true, but just in my mindset, if you take so let's just say a pre workout, a pre workout normally a good one should have like four or five ingredients, mm -hmm. like talking like beta alanine, caffeine, uh, citrulline. Uh, L theanine and let's say um, some BCAs maybe or yeah, I'm, not, I'm not in my head like I know <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I would cover that too branch chain amino acids <laughs> no, I, I, I took it I just didn't know what was in it <laughs> but uh, yeah so say you wanted those there's basically five ingredients and let's say you're giving 30 servings of each ingredient that means there's a hundred what 150 if there's five yeah, 150, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Doing my math right? You're good. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so there's 150, so to speak, ingredients in this jug. And they give you a scooper and they say, you're going to scoop this out and you're going to get exactly what they say. I don't know. Maybe there's some scientific thing to it, but that just doesn't make sense to me. Because if you get like five marbles of, that are blue and five are red, and you throw them in there and you're like, you're going to get two of each. I just, no. That's not. Because everybody scoops differently. Yeah, that too, and then I mean, also they could, like, I didn't really think about it like that. And like, every ingredient different sells ways. different too. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's different, different ways. Yeah, because like for instance, yeah. caffeine. Caffeine is a really small type. Yeah, I guess not grain, but like material. It's really, 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 really small speck of sand, so to speak. Whereas like citrulline is a lot bigger. Uh, so it's like um, creatine. That's a bigger type crystal. Maybe they grind it down a little bit more or whatever and throw it together. But it just doesn't make sense to me that that does. And then also when I was pursuing this, I used to work at a, a, um, a supplement store. And a big, big problem that I got is that every hit was different to them. Some, t mm. some hits were like I felt a little bit more juiced up. Some I did and feel as juiced up or whatever um not i shouldn't say juiced up but as energetic <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> as energetic so uh one of the big things with uh, uh custom gains is that we make it so if you get 30 servings you get 30 uh packets every serving is individually packet for the customer it makes it a hell of a lot more convenient uh that's also geared towards the um the military too because another big problem is that military huge people that just want to because they basically don't have that much stuff to do. Oh, yeah, they're working some, out all the time. Yeah, yeah, jacked as hell, and they don't want to take a giant jug on, say, a ship or mm -hmm. overseas or whatever or wherever they're going. They don't want to take a giant yeah, jug that's tub. literally yeah. this big. Yeah, that, so, goes back, that goes back exactly. to convenience, convenience like you were talking exactly. about. And then you're just – it's efficiency as well as that quality product that you yeah. want to put out there because – I know that very well because in the CBD industry, they, they've done studies that they've tested 10 different CBD products and only two of them have the correct amounts. Some of them don't even have CBD in them. Yeah. So like you have to make sure that what you're putting into your body is exactly what it says on the label. Yeah. And, yeah, you're, and then, trying to, you're trying to resolve that issue. Exactly. Yeah, not only yeah. that, it's super like the fact that you can, you can tailor uh, your own protein or your own supplements to what you feel your body needs for one huge problem solver yeah number two the fact that yeah like how you're saying i don't have to carry this big old jug into because i go to the gym a lot too you know i don't have to yeah. carry this big old protein jug in the gym looking like that guy no one wants to look like that guy in the gym hey. mm -hmm. you know what i mean hey bro so the fact that, those gains. don't <laughs> so, talk about that guy no, i know no. that guy <laughs> <laughs> no but yeah i feel like even that guy <laughs> That even that guy smart. doesn't want to <laughs> cut the back camera right there so you can see him pointing and even himself. that guy uh what i was gonna say is even that guy the person that's jacked in the gym he looks you know he's doing his thing Juice. i'm pretty sure he doesn't want to carry that big old drug in there mm -hmm. dude so the fact that you can go in there with the exact su supplement that you feel your body needs but then also have it compact i think that's that's, that's yeah a, a little so choice, a man. box awesome. a box of 30 so to speak servings is roughly like i don't know like this this big, think of that in a rectangle. I can't that's great for yeah, no, that's great for podcasting, man. Yep, uh, right anyways, there. it's that. <laughs> <laughs> cut, the cut the camera uh, A right here. Cut the camera uh, A. <laughs> At, what he was saying for the listeners, you know, it's as big as about an orange, right? Yeah, it's about yeah, three, yeah. yeah, and yeah, it's uh, it's about now what I'd kind say, of naval Valencia? I'd say eight inches. 10 inches uh, tall mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's 30 servings roughly. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think that's even a little bit smaller, but the packet comes out to be like a little snack pack. Yeah. So it's very, very, very small. So yeah, you nice. can easily take the 30 servings with you anywhere. Um, and then especially just like, 
my whole thing of it too is if me and your workouts are different, me and your eating habits are different, right. like our diets and whatnot, then why should me and your supplements be the same? That's right. And uh, another thing I wanted to touch on with a supplement company is that not everyone, just like Kyle just demonstrated, he doesn't know a thing about supplements, but yet he still takes them because mm -hmm. they're, I don't know if you know that, but they're really good for you. Like they help you extreme amounts. I just take them. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people don't know what they should have in it. Yeah. Don't know the ingredients in it. Don't know the dosage amounts of those ingredients, which are right. extremely important. Um, and so they just they just sometimes will even Google. Like I've even Googled what does say beta alanine do for your body. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll get uh, some magazines. Like I don't want to say they're, it's called Live, and then a little bit strength something along the lines of that mm -hmm. but uh they don't reference anything they don't reference any studies so mm -hmm. all their stuff could literally just be bro science so to speak yeah that, um, and then you're, you know the other thing too is everyone's body reacts differently to all those different ingredients yeah, i mean yeah and no what like a little bit toward a little bit different but most of the time it's because the studies that are there, like say on uh, uh, caffeine, so to speak, or mm -hmm. beta alanine, beta alanine for your body to work, it needs, I believe it's two grams. Uh, it's either two grams or two and a half grams, at least that much. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was done on a wide uh, um, group of people. Mm -hmm. And all of them had pretty much this. I mean, if it's off, it's only off like a percent, so to speak. But mm -hmm. everyone has pretty much the same exact reaction. Like if we all take beta alanine right now and say like three grams, we'd all feel an itchy feeling. Mm -hmm. Some people hate that though. Some people like it. Uh, but there's certain ingredients that do certain stuff like beta alanine, like I just said, is the cause of that itchy feeling. Yeah. I freaking love that. I I love my face feeling like it just needs to be ripped off. <laughs> it just it gives me such a good pump, so to speak, and uh -huh. it's really I think good. Everybody loves that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, you guys haven't grown a full beard and been stopped by TSA. <laughs> Why? Hey, come on, man! Like you know, I'm a little bit insecure about. You're like that, you're George. like Dwight, Dwight with the. <laughs> 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 no, but. Uh, on your website, I'm assuming you guys, this is all through like an e-commerce site that you're going to be promoting yeah. that out? Um, I Are mean, you? I don't know exactly the route that we're doing yet because so far I've wanted to do, because I have a patent pending on the whole machine of it. Mm -hmm. So I so f I don't know if I really want to build the company of aspect of it or do the licensing size buyout and then just go to my next thing. Because gotcha. that's, that's a huge thing of mine, like a huge debate that I've been having probably for the past week. Um, I mean, I, the company could easily go both ways. I just don't know what I want to do. Because, like, in the sense, the buyout slash licensing, I can get that pretty much done, move to the next thing. Um, that will give me roughly anywhere from 100 to 200K. And I can live com comfortably for, like, two or three years yeah. while I'm doing my other stuff and growing another thing. Um, or I could just do the whole company aspect of it. I just – I personally don't know, but uh, right now – like we sh kind of shut our website down. We did. We did s provide that, like having the mm -hmm. actual and, and written audio um, and uh, what's the other one? Video format of us telling you what the ingredients does, and it's all backed by science. Um, we have even a link of it. But just uh, one of the things that the custom gains company, if it does flourish or whatever, not getting bought out, that's one of the big things that we wanted to do. Nice. Because a lot of people just don't know what the hell yeah. they're taking. So Dalton, one of the things uh, I wanted to ask you is because we're both kind of creators, uh, designers, all that stuff. I love tinkering. I love technical stuff. If you go back to episode one, link here, um, one of the things that I talk about is my crazy keyboard project where I'm reprogramming stuff. So I wanted to ask mm -hmm. you, and this is like a multi-layered question, is what tools or resources, uh, it doesn't have to be like a 3D printer or anything, just like any resource in general, did it, uh, have you used like from two years ago till now that got you to where you are and do you foresee yourself using that to get you where you need to be or do you plan on going with something else? And it could be tools, processes, mindsets, whatever. Hmm. Um, I'd say one of the biggest things is just learning and consuming. Um, I'd say I'd watch ungodly amounts of YouTube mm -hmm. um, and I listen a tremendous amount um, and just learning because I know I'm only 23 and I mean shoot even when I'm probably going to die at like 90 hopefully or 100,000 <laughs> years old learning process. Uh, yeah. yeah just because like I think the biggest thing is that a lot of people miss out is learning um, 
I hated, hate, I think it's because of school. I hated, hated when I went to school. I hated learning, hated history, mm-hmm. didn't care to learn anything. And mostly it's just because the person was teaching me at their own time. I don't know why that was going off. I muted it. Um, stupid phone. <laughs> um, but uh, I'd say it's just consuming and learning. Uh, biggest thing is books. I can't, so one of the things I really can't read, it's really hard for me to sit down in front of a book and actually read through the pages. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I downloaded Audible because uh, they give you like two free books, a little pitch for them. <laughs> they give you, We're they not give sponsored you, yet, but we will be hopefully soon. They get, hey, Audible, yeah, reach out. Reach out. <laughs> they, do, uh, they do two free books um, on your first sign up, but you have to go to Amazon for it. Uh, like type in two free books. Anyways, uh, it's just reading on godly amounts of actual world leaders. I read about uh, Alexander the Great, Nikola Tesla, which was by far one of my favorite uh, books to read was, was Nikola Tesla. Mm-hmm. Just, he was such an ingenious. The only crappy part, like I want to be pretty much like him, the only crappy part that he had was his business mindset. That's yeah. why you hear about, uh, what's his face, uh, Thomason. Thomas Edison. Thomas, yeah, Thomas Edison. Edison. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just F enough enjoyed, enough. no, you just um, too. So anyways, okay. that's why you hear about him instead of Nikola Tesla, because he just destroyed Nikola Tesla. But Nikola Tesla's inventions and stuff like that, like uh, he invented, I want to say it's like the LED or whatever. Basically, mm-hmm. his light was able to burn so much brighter, so much longer than uh, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. Mm-hmm. I just want to learn from those people. So I'd say my biggest thing is learning from those people, uh, learning about history, because you can only know where you're going to go if you know where you've been. Right. Um, just learning that and learning anything else. Like if I want to do something, I first need to learn about it. Like uh, if I wanted, when I did the auto detailing business, uh, I didn't know crap about it. So mm-hmm. the biggest thing that you have is YouTube. YouTube right. can make and do anything for you. You want to yeah. learn anything? YouTube. I, I want, yeah. Like, I, yeah, yeah. There's, no, there's no excuse. Yeah. There's a lot of misinformation. Lot of misinformation but still, not, yeah. Again, there's no, there's the no earth lack is round. of information. There's no lack of information when it we'll comes to you learning. We'll <laughs> truth right. Now, for you, for you, <laughs> your, your, there, for you, uh, uh, Dalton, is you using YouTube as your tool to learn? Uh, just right? the, right? the internet, just the internet, the internet in general. In general. That, you want to learn something, YouTube it. You want to r- learn how to do ads, learn it. But only mm-hmm. learn stuff that you can't really hire someone else to do. Because mm-hmm. you don't want to bottleneck yourself. You don't want to, say, start a company, a great company, and you're the advertiser. Ever, but you need to be doing so much more than just advertising. You need yeah. to be able to delegate, too. Yeah. Uh, but I would say the biggest credit to anywhere I go or anywhere that I've been is from my learning aspect. I, can, I learned how to build a motorcycle from learning nothing about the motorcycle how it runs or anything to building it in just a few months just from YouTube um, I have learned a trim, like 3d printing I've learned how to code uh, with 3d printing uh, like the whole Marlin system I've learned how to do a fusion 360 which is a CAD design uh, cool. 3d mm-hmm. design everything that I've awesome. learned is from YouTube well you were able to focus on what you what interest exactly and that's the thing of just too. the education system throwing the book, at you, yeah. book at you yeah. and saying learn a lot, that and a lot of stuff like, that's just yeah. misinformed too yeah. And you don't get the full story of what's going on. And I think starting as far as back as you can go is probably the best thing for you. Because yeah. if you're able to basically build a, a roadmap in your mind of how things became, it's you, you can just piece stuff together so much mm-hmm. faster, so much better. Mm-hmm. And then so just go based on, on uh, your, your question, George, from what I got from that. Oh, with, with, by the way, I'm not pitching. I'm going to stay the same. No. <laughs> I'm always going to learn. I literally yeah. want to hire someone to do give me a bunch of stuff to give me so I can learn more. Like yeah. I, the one bottleneck of me is I am only one. I have only two hands. So I can only research one thing at a time. I mm-hmm. literally want to hire staff to just feed me information mm-hmm. on everything. Mm-hmm. That's one of my biggest people that I want to hire. Yeah. Nice. Reddit. I love it. Love it, man. What? No, Reddit. So, what do you yeah. Mean? Reddit. Uh, if you're, it, what you need to do is you need to follow a bunch of subreddits because Reddit is is a form as a form system. You know what Reddit is, right? Well, even just like doing that though, I want the stuff. I want oh, to be. Yeah. Li- literally saying like how to build a motorcycles engine and someone give me a thing on like something else of like how to build an airplane type deal mm-hmm. i just want to be fed information yeah. i don't even want to look for you, you it. want to always be learning exactly yeah learning and, and i think and that's so the key for that's everybody, key for everybody. Yeah. And, and whatever you want to do you always have to understand that you're not going to you know know everything mm-hmm. right so 
based off of your question to him, which, when it came to like what uh, tools uh, do you feel you're using and are you going to use that moving forward? I think obviously what you're saying, yeah. learning is your biggest tool and you're never going to stop learning. Yeah. So uh, you, have, you, have to, be, you have to learn something, at least one thing. I would say five, but at least one thing every single day. Mm -hmm. At the end of the year, 365 things you've learned. Wow. Try to make a business out of any one of those. Wow. Love it. Oh, another thing. I um, I read, uh, I don't know if it was a read, uh, about this uh, gentleman, I'm blanking on his name, uh, has an Afro dude, big glasses. Can't, Al Neil Al no, Al Al Chesser, <laughs> Al Al Toucher. I can't remember his name. But anyways, mm -hmm. he said that uh, the only reason why like I'm able to think and fix so many, so to speak, problems is because I'm actually looking for it. I literally, I stopped it because I thought too many. I drove myself crazy because I mm -hmm. couldn't act on any of them because I didn't have seed money. But the biggest thing that you could do for your brain and for yourself is literally every single day you wake up, you have to write 10 things, list them, one, two, three, four, all the way to 10, 10 mm -hmm. things that you can improve something on in the sense of you can improve, uh, say, say if I want to uh, help them on their podcast, I'd give them 10 things on how they can improve their podcast, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And I'll or, need that. We, we will need that. We'll <laughs> no, I don't right think there. so. We'll, we'll but um, like uh, 10 things how I – like it doesn't have to be 10 things on just one subject either. Like um, for instance, I thought of a way to um, – how to, a better Roomba, so to speak, that needs to have like a steam uh, steam in it. Cleaner kind yeah, of. steam because yeah. the mob systems suck. They just spray water and they have a rag that just rolls over. It's just, it's just the terrible. Bacteria. And yeah, the and then steam cleans ninety nine percent of the bacteria. But uh, stuff like that. Um, and it doesn't have to be great. It doesn't have to be all million dollar, uh, million dollar ideas. But mm -hmm. you're just you're just engaging that part of your brain to keep working. That's right. why when you get to the point after a year and you thought of ten things, that's a lot of ideas that you. Again, not all of them are winners, but you'll have at least one. Right. But I would say that's one of the biggest things I've credited to. And then just keeping my mental state checked. Because mm -hmm. entrepreneurship or running your own thing, doing your own thing, uh, the only thing that keeps me sane is I keep a journal either in my book. I mean, either in my phone I have a mm -hmm. notepad or I have a book too, a giant-ass journal that literally I'll say what I'm feeling, how I'm feeling that day, when I wake up, what I want to get done today. Um, I don't have to keep checking it. Literally after I'm done writing it, I don't even look at it ever again. I date it too, but I'm just always, I'm always speaking on well, what I'm feeling. Yeah, that that's just doing another tool always, that you utilize, yeah, utilize to keep and promote your mental health. You want yeah, to make sure that you are healthy and that you can put forth 100% of your brain power every single day. And that, that goes into everything yeah. and mm -hmm. every aspect and every career, everybody needs to do that. And that's yeah. a focus that right. I think right. people need they, to have. They always have yeah, to 100%. continue to what, what I, what I perceive that being is expanding on their mindset. Yeah. Expanding on. That's a good you know, way to put yeah, it. Yeah. Expanding on your mindset, expanding on your knowledge and your education, not in a sense of, you know, popping open the books that you were reading back in grade school, but more so about applied knowledge out in the real world, mm -hmm. you know, like the world leaders, like how you were saying, you know, the, the people in history, um, you know, jotting down different ideas on a day-to-day -day basis so that at the end of the year you have 365 ideas. Um, and obviously with those ideas, with implied action, you know, something's going to come out of it, exactly. right? You know, so constantly expanding your brain and learning um, for you are the are the things that you utilize. Um, yeah, 100%. You know, as far as tools. And, 100%. And how I perceive it, you know, you're never going to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, anyone, you know, I know you're not, but, you know, anyone that's listening, anyone that's viewing this, I mean, you should never stop doing that no. at the end of the day. You know, so, but that being said, you know, Dalton, I appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you. You're welcome Glad to the be on. You killed it, it, brother. You <laughs> killed it. Hell of, hell of an episode. We got some really great content. But for the ones that are listening and the ones that are viewing, this is Millennium Motive. Until next time.